Hi, everybody. Jay Privman, the national correspondent with Daily Racing Forum, joined every week, as always, by Mike Watchmaker. He's the national handicapper with Daily Racing Forum. And we're going to recap the one race that impacted our Derby Watch Top 20 from last week. And, Mike, that was the Fountain of Youth Stakes. And the winner of that race is the lone new member to our Top 20. Give us your thoughts on Promises Fulfilled. Well, Promises Fulfilled on, on the positive side of the ledger improved his previous career best fired by 20 points in his three-year-old debut and I think that that's a very good thing it's a you always want to see these three-year-olds uh, take steps forward off their two-year-old form and certainly promises promises fulfilled do, did that but he also got away with a relatively easy early lead I mean you know the kind of lead that uh, you're certainly not going to get in the Kentucky Derby at least most derbies that aren't won by in the Derby, and he's going to have to show that he can run as well as that uh, when he's subject to pace pressure. Yeah, Mike, I thought the real key to the race was the second quarter mile of the race. They went a fairly aggressive opening quarter uh, with Rod Ortiz sending promises fulfilled. Luis Saez on strike power chose to let him go, and then they really slowed it down the second quarter and third quarters of the race and really kind of turned it into a parade and Promises Fulfilled was able to leave from lead from start to finish. Strike Power, who ran second, uh, I'll go first on him. I thought he ran a good race, but I still think these two-turn races are really at the outer limit of what he wants to do. This was his first time around two turns, but he doesn't change leads. And even though he was gamely trying to get to Promises Fulfilled, it just didn't look to me like he wanted much farther, uh, if at all. What did you think of his race? Well, I think I like pro, uh, strike power more than you do, Jay. Uh, you know, I thought he ran very well. Uh, for a horse that is a, a speedball sprinter, to concede the early lead for whatever reason, the way he did in this race, um, and still try as gamely as he did all the way down to the finish, I thought was a feather in his cap. And it was his only his third career start. And he was drawing away from good magic in the late stages. And I do think, I, I have my own questions about whether Strike Power wants to go in a mile and a quarter. I really, in my heart, don't think he does. Uh, but I think he is the kind of horse that, is, that could win plenty uh, in two-turn races uh, in, in his future. I think he's, he's, a, he's a nice horse. Speaking of good magic, this was his first start as a three-year-old, first of two races that he has scheduled as preps towards the Kentucky Derby. Mike, he was favored on your future line going into the race. He came out of the race as the fourth choice on your future line. That kind of tells me what you thought of his race, but let's hear it from you. Well, um, you know, the future line, I'm, I'm trying to predict how the public would, would bet the Derby at this particular point in time and not necessarily myself. Um, but I, I don't see the public flocking to good magic uh, off of that performance. Uh, you know, I understand that it was his first start off a layoff, but you know what? The same is true for the winner. Uh, promises fulfilled. He was making his first start of the year, too. Uh, I understand that it was only a means to an end, and they want him to peak on Kentucky Derby Day, and I understand that you're never supposed to underestimate a champion, and Good Magic was a deserving two-year-old male champion of 2017. But I just don't see what he did on the racetrack on Saturday you could like about it. I mean, he was empty past the midway point in the far turn. He gave significant count to the stretch, and he took a significant step backward in terms of buyer's speed figures and to me he's really going to have to raise this game in his next start or else he's a, a stone cold bet against uh, until he proves otherwise yeah i was disappointed in his performance as well the one thing that you can say about him going forward is that last year he certainly improved off of his first and his second races and his best race of last year was in the breeders cup which was essentially his third start of which was his third start of the year and this year the Kentucky Derby would be his third start off a layoff it's an analogous preparation but he needs as you said to step forward next time which looks like it'll be the bluegrass stakes well that's our look at last week's fountain of youth stay tuned here at drf.com as Mike and I preview the three big point scoring races coming up this weekend I'm Jay Pridman for Mike Watchmaker thanks for watching